this is the lecture video 152 through 167 <clears throat> with early fighting over um, we start to fight battles um, against the British we go after their headquarters in New York I don't know why Washington would do this He's going after the stronghold of the British um, but is defeated in a series of battles and then we retreat all the way to Pennsylvania and it's kind of crazy you know remember Washington's the face of the rebellion so he just has to keep fighting and keep on he's got to get away if he's going to be captured the revolution will end the British commander Sir William and Richard Howe attempt to negotiate peace terms but we just lost battles why would we negotiate peace uh, American war efforts seem lost after several setbacks. Washington launches a bold attack at Trenton, New Jersey. Now, this is really important. Um, this is one of those that famous painting with Washington's one knee up on the bow of the ship, and uh, it's all that painting's terrible because it's it, in reality it happened at night. That ship wasn't even invented until 60 years after the event happened. I mean, it's a joke. But we go into Trenton, New Jersey. We take Trenton, New Jersey because the Hessians are there and they're absolutely drunk because we're there on uh, December 26th in the wee hours of December 26th just after Christmas and we take uh, the battle of, New of Trenton without basically firing a shot go down the river uh, win a battle in Princeton New Jersey it boosts morale and saves the American cause and this is really what we needed we needed to be able to fight and we need it needed to be able to win in 1777 the British mountain an effort to end the rebellion they want to cut off um, New England from the rest of the colonies. Um, Howe wants to send troops down from Canada, um, but this effort fails, and the colonists meet up with him at the Battle of Saratoga, and it's the first time we basically go toe to toe with the British, for lack of a better term, and we go toe to toe with the British, and we defeat a bigger army. This is the turning point of the war, because after this, we are recognized by the French as legitimate and that we can win so outwardly they can um, have a treaty with us. They've been given a secret aid for a long time but now they can give us um, their full-fledged support. Um, our plan was to winter that winter in Philadelphia um, but the British have better plans. Um, we, you don't really, if you're hunkering down in Philadelphia, you don't really need a whole lot of supplies because you can you're in the city, you're living in ho in homes of people, it'll be okay. But we lose at the Battle of Brandywine Creek. Howe captures Philadelphia. And unfortunately, our men end up in Valley Forge. Um, Valley Forge was terrible. 2,500, roughly 2,500 soldiers die of disease uh, or of starvation um, or the elements. Life sucked there. Uh, they didn't have any food. Uh, they could go hunt, but not a whole lot of animals are out in the winter. Um, they have no winter clothing. Some don't even have shoes. Uh, the tents are very uh, aren't very sheltering, for lack of a better term. It's just a mess. Um, but um, the Spanish send a man to come and train our troops. Uh, and we emerge out of Valley Forge, the ones that survive, a hardened, tough army. The French had been providing secret aid, as I said. And after the Battle of Saratoga, uh, the British, I mean, the, the British, the French signed a military and commercial treaty with the United States so we can start trading with them. Other European nations have already been trying to trade with us, and they have. They started this League of European Nations, uh, the League of Armed Neutrality, which was a League of European Nations who basically just wanted to hamper the British and quote unquote protect their trade with America. Basically, it was just to piss off the British. Okay, they just want to interfere with the British uh, just because they want to. Uh, just because they can, because the British have been, you know, the power for so long. So it's kind of funny uh, that they are doing this. Uh, Britain changes commanders to, to Commander Clinton. And after the Battle of Monmouth, which nobody really wins, there's no more real major fighting in the north. The British swing south. Um, before they swing south, um, they start launching some attacks. Um from their post at Detroit, and they take 
uh, American settlements in Kentucky, Pennsylvania, upstate New York. They're kind of causing problems there. So we decide that we're going to go into the Mississippi River Valley and we're going to take three British settlements there. So in doing so, we hamper them from being able to use the Mississippi as a waterway. They already have the Atlantic um, blockaded off. Um, but they're using the Mississippi as a waterway because they can get on the St. Lawrence River, through the Great Lakes, down the Mississippi, all the way out New Orleans, and it becomes, and we become a nuisance for them as well. Um, we don't have a navy. Our navy sucks because we don't have one, <laughs> um, and so we in, we enlist pirates. Uh, we commission them so it makes them privateers. They just have a piece of paper in their hand that says that they are not a pirate, they're a privateer. And basically it's, uh, we are telling these guys, fight for us, fight against the British, take whatever you want. I mean, it's just another, privateer is another word for a private. Uh, so it's kind of interesting. Uh, we have, we've been trying to fight these guys, the, the pirates, for a long period of time. And now we give them a piece of paper that says, okay, you can legally be a private. You can legally be a pirate, a pirate privateer. In 1778, the British swing south, as I stated earlier. They think their strongest loyalists are from Virginia to Georgia, and they're right. They go kick the ever living crap out of us in Charleston in 1780. It's our worst defeat. You know, we're winning the war. The turning point of the war happens in Saratoga, but we do lose one of our, uh, we do lose our most devastating battle in Charleston in 1780. But the British can't leave well enough alone. The British prepare to sweep through the South, but the British atrocities inflamed anti-British feelings. They, they just piss off all the people in the South, and then they wonder why the colonists don't like the British. It just, it, it amazes me. Um, and then we'll come back to this map here in just a moment. But the leader of the... Uh, American army at this point. Of course, Washington's still in charge, but Nathaniel Green assumes command of the American force, and he is down here. Hold on. He is down here after the Battle of Charleston, and basically his strategy is to hit um, Cornwallis and his men and then retreat. And when Cornwallis and his men stop chasing him, he's going to turn right around and hit him again. So basically he's pushing him in a northern direction. Washington's hanging out over here. Okay? Washington's just waiting. He's hoping that Nathaniel Green can push him towards Virginia. Once they get him to Virginia, this is when Washington is going to quote unquote pounce and he does um, and kind of traps uh, Cornwallis at Yorktown. And Cornwallis isn't worried. Cornwallis is, ah, it's no big deal. We got trapped. We'll just call for ships to come down from New York or New Jersey and uh, grab us and take us out. But as those ships are coming to save Cornwallis, because he's trapped on a peninsula, the principal of York, the, <laughs> excuse me, the peninsula of Yorktown, the French come and aid us. One time the French save the day, uh, and they start bombarding the British in Yorktown. They win uh, what was known as the Battle of the uh, Virginia Capes, uh, and they stop the transport ships from coming in and getting um, the British. And because Cornwallis is the leader of the, Amer of the British Army in North America, he surrenders, and the war is over. Uh, very quickly, um, we send three individuals, Adams, Jay, and Franklin, with a representative from the Redcoats, from the British, to, to, to the Crown and to Parliament and say, the war is over. Women assumed new private and public roles during the war. They had greater financial responsibilities at home, and women nursed the wounded, wove clothing and uniforms, and formed organizations to raise money. The war ended slavery in the North, but it just made it a stronger institution in the South, and we'll talk more about that a little bit later. Here's a chart in your book that you should know. Where the battle happened, the date-ish. You should know them in order, the outcome, who won, the major ones that we talked about in class, and on the lecture videos, and if it was the war in the North, war in the frontier, things like that. The war was disastrous for Native Americans. Um, they suffered heavy casualties in general. Not a lot of Native Americans fought in the war, but they suffered heavily, heavy casualties, the ones that did. Uh, and the whites are going to encroach on their land. Us colonists are going to encroach on their land and take it from them. The war uh, 
demand for supplies on both sides disrupted the distribution of goods and raised real prices drastically. Stop using paper money. It's worthless. Uh, we have to use, you know, actual hard currency or we're just going to barter. Uh, and, you know, I made that example in the class. One man's uh, trash is another man's treasure. You may be able to trade something that you really don't want to somebody who really wants something. And uh, you, you think you got better value and they think they got better value from it. So it's really, really interesting. Economic conditions promote de uh, demoralizing and divisive and stimulated profiteering and speculation. And, of course, as always. All right. United States peace negotiators, those three men, again, Adams, Jay, and Franklin, ignore instructions from the Second Continental Congress, and they work out a, a, an agreement with the British. Franklin's like, we're here. We're not leaving without an agreement. We'll go home. They'll vote on it. They'll be fine with it. They'll be mad for a little while because we didn't follow instructions, but we're hammering out a deal. Okay. First thing. British acknowledge United States independence. No problem. We extend our boundary all the way to the Mississippi and extend the northern boundary with Canada uh, and the British. The British forces are to leave American property, including slaves, behind when they left. That means that uh, anything they brought with them, they, they can take. Anything that they may have acquired in America, they have to leave. And then uh, our fishermen uh, gain access to the waters off of Newfoundland, and that's kind of John Jay's way of saying, uh, you know, let's help out my region, um, and, and Adam is okay with it, and uh, so is Franklin, so we really don't need that access off the coast of Canada, but we'll take it. And then the last big thing, um, as far as we are concerned, and I'll go back to that in just a second, but uh, while, uh, Franklin puts in there that all pre-war debt, anything that we owed the British or the British owed us prior to the war, and we owed them more, um, they would be payable in full. And we don't like that. The colonists don't like that very much, but Franklin's thinking 10 steps ahead. He's thinking, you know, we are um, we are going to have to trade with these people. We don't have trade partners here. We're going to have to trade with England. we got to make money somehow. we got to figure it out. Um, and so he makes sure that all those debts are able to be paid in full. Spain receives the British provinces of East and West Florida. So basically they get the tales of Mississippi and Alabama. It connects to, uh, the Spanish uh, Louisiana all the way to Flo uh, all the way to the present day Florida. Uh, it does, however, limit our access to the Gulf of Mexico. What do the French get? French get nothing because they don't care. They don't need it. They want they want to tell the British they did this all out of spite just to piss them off, which is awesome. And this is what America looks like, or North America, excuse me, looks like. Washington, the three components of success for us, why we kind of won the war. Washington's crucial, key, yes. Uh, the French helping us, crucial, key, yes. The other big thing is that the British just screw this up, man. Uh, they can they contribute heavily to their own downfall. I mean, there's no, I mean, they could have taken us out. Uh, but they chose not to. They chose not to go full-fledged into it. They thought they could take us without doing that, and fortunately for them, they lose. And that's it for Lecture 152 through 167.